Guys, thank you and welcome to our uh, November event for the Hive Brisbane. It is our last event for 2010, so thank you for making the effort with all of the Christmas parties and functions on at this time of year. We'll um, kick off with the usual survey. Can I please have a raise of hands of all of the people that are new tonight, their first ever Hive event? Fantastic, thank you. Very big welcome. Um, guys, the Hive is a not-for-profit organisation. Our ethos is to build the entrepreneurial community in Brisbane. So while some do refer to us as a networking event, we're not here about selling. We're here about making friends, finding like-minded people, and just having a good time. So while we're a not-for-profit and we put on a free event not selling anything, we appreciate if you don't sell anything as well while we're just getting along. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, as we are a not-for-profit organisation, we've got Clothly Estate Wines here, who support us through our speaker's gifts. Uh, Greystone Bar for hosting us every month. We've got national sponsors who are RMIT and Deloitte Digital. Um, and for those that weren't aware, our events do operate in Sydney and Melbourne as well. Tonight we've got uh, Richard Slatter from wearehunted.com. Uh, Richard's got a quite an interesting story to tell and I won't tell it for him, but uh, Richard's got over 15 years experience in the web and IT and advertising industry. He was the general manager of a web agency in Brisbane called F5. Uh, and he's now the general manager of We Are Hunted, which launched in April last year. We Are Hunted is our uh, online music chart for the digital generation, which tracks the top 99 top songs being talked about and chatted about on blogs and social networks across the globe. So, without further ado, please welcome Richard. Thank you, Mike. Um, an illegal manoeuvre, having a beer before or during my presentation. I might just put it down. <laughs> Thank you. Um, gee, I don't have to explain what it is, do I, now that you've, uh, you've stolen the show a little bit there, Mike? But thanks very much for um, the invite and for the opportunity to come along and have a chat to you about, about what we do. I do talk at a, a couple of events um, around the place, and I don't really recognise that many people here today, which is really good, because hopefully you won't have heard uh, this story before, so it won't be too boring. <coughs> But um, I suppose before um, I get right into it, I'm just going to collect my thoughts about what I want to share with you. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of a preamble about what it is that we do and why. Uh, and then I want to share some of the lessons, I suppose, that we've learned along the way. And that's, I guess, the, the, the key takeouts, I suppose, that I want to try and contribute. And um, assuming that most of you don't really know us or about the site, then, then I hope there's going to be plenty of questions about what we're up to, and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer those. So let me just start by saying uh, a little bit of a preamble. There are, there are today thousands of artists and musicians out there that are recording their music um, and playing and just trying to get their sound out there more than, more than perhaps ever before. Uh, but thankfully nowadays, you know, there, there might be lots of people listening to the sound that are produced by those artists, but there might only be one person who's listening to it. And today that one person can actually be enough because there are so many tools to share and spread the word if you, you know, you listen to a sound, you hear a sound that you love, and you suddenly want to share it with somebody else in that moment of excitement, just in a couple, a couple of characters, a handful of sentences. Um, there are so many tools to do that now. Or, you know, you can take a little bit more time and go into it in a bit more detail and really explain what it is about that, that track or that artist that you love and you might, you know, get into blogging about it. And who knows, somebody else might hear about the sound and listen to it as well and, and they pick it up and listen to it and then they share it. And there's just this sharing cycle that goes on now, as we all know, we all participate, unlike anything we've ever seen before. Um, and that's a massive opportunity for artists. But there's so much data out there, if you think of it that way. So much data, uh, so much sound and buzz that's happening. If you could just kind of collect it in one place and listen to it and organise it and measure it, um, you could actually determine what are the hottest songs online right now every day. And that's exactly what our site does. It, it tries to deliver fresh chart every single day um, based upon the buzz that's happening out there on the internet right now. So yeah, it's, a, it's called wearehunted.com. And we think of it as a great new way to discover new music, uh, but it's also, we like to think of it as the, the digital chart, or the, the new chart for the digital generation. <clears throat> so, just grabbing some notes. So that's what it is. Now let me share a few lessons with you. 
So the, we created the, uh, this website in April 2009, that's last year. Um, but we've been in business for about a year prior to that. We've been developing uh, search and aggregation software, which we base um, a couple of other sites that we own on, primarily uh, a business news site called whatnews.com.au. So the idea was we built this search tech that's very good at identify, crawling the web and identifying companies and business people, and they're trying to deliver very rich and contextual um, search results through to people, much better than what you can get on a news.com.au site or an SMH. Sure, some, certainly something a bit similar to Google News, but with a really strong focus on the Australian market. So I suppose the first lesson is that sometimes innovation can happen in a completely unexpected way, and it's not that you can't plan your business, but I think sometimes you can't exactly plan for what's going to happen. So sure, you make a plan, but I think you have to be prepared for the unexpected to come along, which is, I suppose, what happened to us around Christmas 2008. So we had an established site. Uh, it, was, it was growing, so it started at about 20,000 users a month, um, and it grew up to about 450,000 users a month. So it's a very busy website. Um, and we had our plans about how we were going to make money. We had sorted it all out, you know, what were our revenue streams. We were going to have a premium version of whatnews.com.au for the real news junkie. We were going to sell paid plugins um, for the likes of SAP or Microsoft CRM or Salesforce.com, for example. We were going to license the technology out to other providers who might want to do similar sorts of things on their own sites. So there was a bunch of ideas and, you know, some of them, uh, some of them more successful than others. But in about Christmas 2008, we had a kind of a chance meeting with a couple of young guys in Brisbane um, who had, I guess, less resources than us, less money, uh, less tech, no tech um, capability whatsoever. But they had uh, an interesting idea, and they approached us and said, and it's a very simple idea, and the idea was, look, the music chart as it is, is defunct. It just doesn't work anymore. It's, it's meaningless. Um, and we've seen that you've got this great news and aggregation tech, and we wonder whether that could be applied to other spaces beyond business news. And I suppose this is something that had always been in the back of our mind, um, but we had resolved not to explore other areas unless we could partner with other individuals from you know, those spaces, be it sport or you know, pharmaceuticals or government or whatever it was, uh, where they would know more about the industry than us, and we would, you know, we would have somebody help us navigate our way in those spaces. So that was the suggestion. And we thought, hey, that's a pretty interesting idea. Let's give it a go. Which I suppose brings us to another lesson, which is sometimes you can actually do business just on a handshake. And in fact, if you don't do business on a handshake, you, you can end up actually not just not doing anything at all or you know, sitting around drafting up agreements and that kind of thing and just not focusing on the exciting idea that you've just come up with. So we sat around and had a couple of meetings and we thought, you know, this could go somewhere, what should we do about it? So the, the guys who are now called Native Digital uh, said, okay, well, we'll contribute some design capability and time. And we said, well, we'll, design, we'll, we'll contribute some dev and technology capability. And, and let's just try and get something up to test the idea. So, you know, we had those conversations around Christmas and for a month after and whatever. So uh, we just basically... Uh, pulled a site together in four to six weeks uh, and just got it out there. So, so this sort of brings me to another lesson, um, especially when you're playing the web space, but I suppose this could apply probably to, to any business, is that, um, well, the way we say it is don't launch, iterate, is a kind of webby, a webby phrase, I suppose, is don't, you know, sit around and try and make whatever it is that you're building perfect, because it will never be perfect. Um, just get it out there and test it. The web, effectively, is just a massive... Uh, market research space. So just throw your ide ideas out there, see what sticks, and if it does, then um, iterate and improve it over time. So that was, uh, I guess, another lesson um, for us, and I suppose the way that we did approach it. Now, what happened after that was, was quite interesting, because we launched it on a Thursday, um, Australia time, and I remember I was taking a long weekend, I left early on a Friday, ridiculously, um, I had a commitment to go away to a farm for a weekend. And my business partner rang me up and said, um, the site is going crazy, the servers are melting, <laughs> basically. You know. Now what had happened was that Wired magazine had, had got wind of 
the site and they checked it out and reviewed it and wrote a really, a really nice review of the site. Now, why it tends to be a bit of a, a kind of mind leader in this space and what usually would happen is why writes an article and then TechCrunch, another, another big tech site will pick it up and then Mashable will pick it up and from there it just goes. So that's exactly what happened to us. It went wide, TechCrunch, Mashable, it got picked up here by marketing sites like Mumbrella that specialise in the media marketing space and then on the Monday morning it was picked up by news.com.au as well. Uh, so I guess at that point, just going back to that earlier lesson of you sometimes can do business on a handshake, which you can, it did precipitate um, us having to sit down with our partners and saying, okay, well, we ran the test and clearly we're onto something here, but for us to take this further, we need to invest in this thing. It's going to take on a life of its own and, and it, it requires time and money and resources, so, so what do we do? So we did that really, really quickly and upfront and we drafted a very simple arrangement between us um, very quickly and equitably and so now we're still working alongside them and have done that since. Um, so that's fantastic. Another lesson. So, <clears throat> around, oh yeah, so that was, that's right, okay. Usually I have some speakers brought here to at least point me in the right direction, but there's none today, which is challenging, thank you, Mike. So, um, about, everything was going great, you know, there was a lot of traffic going to the site. We had about 100,000 people visit over that first week. Um, it settled down, as things do, and was kind of tracking on 180 to 200,000 people a month which is still, you know, no slouch when you basically spend no marketing dollars whatsoever. Um, and so it was all going great. And then six weeks later, suddenly the site just stopped working. And we thought, what's going on here? And what had happened was we'd actually been blacklisted by YouTube. So now to exp explain to you um, what that means and what we were doing, um, obviously, you know, you can use YouTube at the front end as a user and just watch videos there, but there's also a kind of programmatic backdoor for developers to access YouTube content and syndicate it out onto other sites. So we were doing exactly that. We were going into YouTube, which is all very legal, you can do it, uh, and we were using their content on our site, so you know, when somebody clicked on a particular song, the song would stream. We don't condone downloading, but the song would stream. Um, and the, all this just stopped. Now the reason it was blacklisted is that well, we suspected we'd broken the YouTube terms of, terms of service, which pretty explicitly state you need to display both video, it's fairly important to YouTube, um, and as well as audio. And we were only playing the audio, which was a bit sneaky. So we just got switched off. And um, trying to get switched back on was, was a real headache. So we had a music site now that plays no music, so it's not much good to anybody. Um, so what did we do? We, we have a, a connection with What If? And what if you know, there's a fairly big um, internet company here and they, are, they have a Google account manager. So I went to the Google account manager in Sydney uh, to see if they could help me out. And obviously, really, I was just talking to an ad sales style rep in Sydney who knew nothing of YouTube or who to put me in touch with, but obviously said they would try to help. And, and, and that just sort of happened. Um, I tried calling Google, obviously we emailed them. It's you know, just basically impossible to get in touch with them. Um, so we had to think about a plan B. So we decided that we should try to play music via MySpace rather than YouTube. So this time we read the T's and C's a bit more carefully. We got the site ready to play both video as well as audio. Um, and then we probably, the right thing this time, we went to MySpace. I arranged the meeting. I wanted to talk to them. Um, and interestingly, just as I went to walk into that meeting, my business partner Stephen rang and said, oh, you know, we've just been switched back on, YouTube is back on. And <laughs> so that was an interesting meeting. Hi, I'm here to, you know, try and talk you into letting us show MySpace video on our site. We don't really need it now. Uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, was, it was funny. But uh, anyway, we do, we do a lot of stuff with the lovely people at MySpace. I'm conscious this has been recorded um, since then. I'll go into that in a bit more detail a bit later. 